if we could just real quick, because I know everybody asks you about Halloween stuff, but um, I read something recently, and it was kind of cool that you said this about the mythos with Michael Myers, that the way you're going to handle this is that he's not a supernatural human being in the sense of he can't be killed. And that's all what happens to any good horror franchise that goes too long. Eventually, the character becomes, like, immortal yeah and you know mythical and it's like it was based on a real person now it's just a a, that's a monster a figment of your imagination but you said there's something scarier about you taking out the garbage and noticing someone standing in the shadow staring at you than this monster you know it'll take forever to kill chasing you down the street a hundred percent i mean it's like i I feel like for horror to work on me i have to be able to picture myself in the situation and so uh yeah, when you, you know, I think as those movies went on and on as a way to just to keep Michael Myers alive, I think it became harder and harder to identify with the people in the movie or the situation because it seems so preposterous. And the first Halloween just works on such a gut level of, you know, there's someone who's escaped an asylum and he's in this town. You know, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's just simple and basic. And I think the scariest stuff is simple and basic. And uh, so that's what we, you know, that was what we were wanting to do with this is, and we don't want to get that by giving him some convoluted backstory that humanizes him. We just want to get it down get to right down to the yeah. point of where we're at and where this thing is starting. Yeah. And it just, and that's the thing with, with Michael Myers is that, yeah, he's silent and he's emotionally dead. But that doesn't mean he's a machine or he's a spirit or something like that. And then you got to go through all these complex levels of, you know, finding a spell book and, and going back to his grave and doing some kind of seance in order to, to get rid of him. 100%. Now it's just like, this is just a serial killer. Well, and like if you watch that original movie too, it's like the body count isn't even that high in the film. And like Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't and even. And it's very dark. It's very it's dark. It's shot very dark. And it's like, it's all working on tension. It's like, you're you're just seeing like, when is she going to realize he's there? And, uh, and that is so horrifying. It's scary. I think tension is what it's all about is keeping that tension and keeping people's stomach in knots I don't know if it was the because Alien has this too I don't know if it was just because of the technology in the 70s going into the 80s but horror movies Alien like I said they're shot very dark Mm -hmm. and it's not like now when you see a movie, even though it's dark you can still see the outline of somebody in, in in the corner of the room the shadow thing it's just half the film is not there. It's just blacked out, and then when they come out, it's it's a really, oh, shit moment. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on doing that kind of style with doing the new Halloween? Do you want to bring it back to the dark, gritty kind of vibe? Uh... Yeah, for sure. You know, David Green is going to direct it, and, you know, I, I, I've known him forever. He's a, He was my next-door neighbor my freshman year of college. Me and him have always been buds, and have created together and uh he's just one of those interesting directors he's like a robert altman who just never wants to stay in one genre he likes to try everything and he's influenced by a lot of different directors and so i def talking to him his approach is definitely uh similar to what carpenter's approach was is he likes the big wide master shots and uh and letting the horror sort of play out and not just get it through quick cuts and things like that i i think it was kind of cool when they announced a while ago that you were going to take a crack at the Halloween franchise because a lot of people were like Danny McBride like he's a he's a <laughs> he's a badass but he's a comic actor and it's like how is he going to do a horror movie justice and uh the little that's been coming out and the more and more that you've been talking about it I think if you just do your research people that you'll rest assured that Danny's got a great idea of where of where this is going. Yeah, you know, we are fans foremost of this uh, of this series and of John Carpenter. So it was really important for me and David as well to have Carpenter's blessing on this because we wouldn't really be interested in it unless he was interested in it. And so, uh, yeah, we went and pitched our take to him, which was crazy to uh, sit in a room with him and tell him where you think Michael Myers should go next. And uh, luckily, he was into it. He dug it. Yeah, no one's touching it right now. So here's the keys. <laughs> Let's see what now you do with it. Now we're just trying to convince him to do the score too. That's our that's our other big goal. Wow, that would yeah. be amazing. Yeah. Well, I think that will happen, especially if Halloween starts getting uh, the rave reviews that we're expecting. Good. They'll be like, okay, here's the vault. What other properties do you want to bring <laughs> yeah. back here? We'll do the toys. You want to? Okay, re- yes. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, Randy and Neca would love to do the toys. Yes. <laughs>